got it on video. What's up, Life Right Nation? What's up, Life Right Nation? <laughs> so we are officially T minus six days until we race in the 4400 Unlimited Series at King of the Hammers. And we are T minus three days until we actually qualify for the race. So to prepare, we've got Kevin fully strapped in with Hans on for safety because driving in this thing at high speed without it is hurtful, hurt hurting. Brutal. So to prepare, we are actually out here with Bill Stein and Wes, Bill Stein shock tuner, which you guys remember from a previous video to give a final rundown on how these shocks are gonna perform during the race. It's dialed in pretty dang well so far. We've pre-ran the desert loop and it did amazing, but we have swapped to heavier tires and wheels since we last tuned it. So we do wanna make sure that it is as perfect as we can possibly get it, which is what we're about to do. The car feels really good, but I, what I'm feeling is I think the extra weight in the back is kind of allowing too much compression, and it, that's kind of allowing the back end to step out side to side. But I, from what I've heard, these bombers just kind of do that because the wheelbase and the way they're designed. But we got Wes here looking at it, and you can ask him what he's thinking. What are you thinking, Wes? Uh, I think we'll try a turn or two in the long tube compression and uh, go from there. All right, I like your haircut, by the way. Well, thank you. <laughs> so one of the issues is, is we don't technically know what this car is supposed to feel like because we've never owned a bomber before and we've this is we're still very new i've never to had this. an off-road race car before yeah and so this the the chassis and how it's what's normal behavior versus what is abnormal behavior is sort of unknown to us so we're just we're dialing it in in a way that whatever feels best for kevin behind the driver's seat right and so what i'm feeling right now i think is the front's the front's doing its job, but the rear seems to be Sit dipping too, too hard. And I'm hoping by adding more compression, it won't. That also, by doing that, it could make it harsher inside the car. So we don't- We're gonna, we're gonna try one turn. We're gonna go again, see how it feels. And if it's better, great. If it's not, yeah. we'll take it back out.
had any issues when you were doing the lap uh, with the front bottoming out too hard or anything like that? I don't think so. I don't think I felt it. Uh, Does it look like it's packing? No, like, I, I think uh, if we add a little bit of compression, it would it would stay close to the ground. We can try it, and if it doesn't work, then we can take it back out. Because the car's staying level, but the, the wheels are coming up off the ground. So if we just slowed them down a little bit, they might stay in contact with the ground a little more often. It feels more fun though. When the <laughs> oh my God, Kevin. It's way more. It's way more entertaining with when I feel them come off the ground. Yeah. I feel like I'm going fast enough. as high because I can hear the engine rev up when it does it yeah so it wasn't it instead of whoa, it's, whoa, 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 whoa like yeah. it was it, just it was staying on the ground better catching I think a little bit better I feel like I went faster that time they're still getting air but they were getting much less air I think did you have the mic on that whole time since we blowing it out nah no you didn't nah you did didn't you you're nah. pointing the mic right at me. Nah. And instead of the car sounding good, it's going to be blown out. No, it'll be fine. Let me hear it. Come here. It'll be fine. Let me hear it. It'll be fine. Let me hear it. Worry about your job, which is driving. Come here, amateur. Don't worry about the camera. Come here, amateur. So next up on our list of things that we have to go ahead and take care of before we race this thing is if you remember on that last video, we had that cap come loose on our front axle U-joint and we were warned that we should mark them to make sure they're not spinning or best case, get them TIG welded so that they don't back out and we have the same thing happen again. Well, we got the one that did back out and get sheared off. We got that one replaced, but we, we don't want this to happen in the middle of a race. So we're going with the worst possible case scenario and trying to prevent that. And we actually came over here, they're in the vendor area. So it's the fab school and they're quite literally a school and they teach everything from metal fabrication to digital manufacturing and MIG and TIG welding as well. And they have volunteered because A, not only do they have a TIG welder, which almost no one here on the lake bed does, they have one and they are willing to weld it for us because neither Kevin nor I know how to TIG weld. So heroes, saviors, right here for us. All right, so another shout out to the Fab School because this is, honestly, it's just one less thing to go wrong during the race and to leave us stranded. And just so you guys know, amidst the chaos that is King of the Hammers and us prepping for actually racing, it's not the only thing we're doing. I am still <laughs> editing videos for the YouTube channel. And in addition to that, we've got other things throughout the week that we have scheduled like photo shoots for sponsors and partners and stuff like that that we have to still fit in to our schedule. And so it's, this is, I, I feel like I've said this probably a million times, maybe not on camera, but this is hands down probably one of the most stressful things we've ever done, ever. Because normally like we're, we're always busy. We're always keeping ourselves busy doing rad stuff and sharing awesome adventures with you guys. But it's, I don't know how to explain it. We're so in it 
right now. Like this means a lot at this point to Kevin and I, whether or not either of us have actually admitted it, it would definitely be heartbreaking to, to not cross the finish line. I don't know. I know we both want it like so bad. And we're, you know, either way, win or lose or cross the finish line or, you know, <laughs> get stranded out in the middle of the desert. It's still going to be fun. It's still going to be awesome. We're still going to enjoy the shit out of it. But this is stressful. This entire, this last month and a half, two months of building and getting here. And now we're here and there's still so much to do just on our normal things that we do anyways. Uh, but on top of that, everything else, uh, it'll be fine. It'll be fine. It'll be fine. It'll be fine. Mm -hmm. All right, you guys, so it is Monday night. We qualify On Wednesday, Wednesday morning. morning. Now, earlier today, um, our Ultra 4 car started misfiring and it freaked me out. At the I, photo shoot, after I stopped filming, Kevin yeah, did a it, burnout for a photo. <laughs> it freaked me out, the car started misfiring really badly. I didn't know what the issue was. And I got really mad. An hour or two prior to that, a subscriber, Nate, came by and he was like, hey, you know, I watch all your stuff. I have a bomber too. If you need anything, look for the big purple dragon. There's and, literally a big purple yeah, we'll blow-up dragon. But he's like, if you need anything, I've got a big trailer. I've got tons of spare parts for a bomber, which is the guy, the, the bomber right here. And so I was thinking, ah, maybe he has some spare wires or something because it maybe it's spark plugs or wires. But so we, we stopped by. So we and stopped by. This is what we found. We just want to show you guys this so you can realize what some of these people, some of these drivers, and some of these teams, hopefully not us, <laughs> but what some of these teams go through to be here. So Nate with Talent Tank, this is his bomber right here. And if you'll notice, it's missing a lot of stuff, like, you know, the transmission and the transfer case and the entire interior. In about 24 hours almost, he has to be out there qualifying qualify. with us. And, well, his entire bomber is almost in pieces. And the reason is something that might actually sound familiar to you guys. So if you remember when we rebuilt our transmission, remember maximum transmission actually told us that we were having a clearance issue on the bottom of our trans pans with our solenoids and we ended up having to clearance the bar underneath our trans pan so it wasn't smashing up and breaking our solenoids well as you can see here mr nate is experiencing the uh the same issue and so now we're all getting high off a of brake cleaner. <laughs> Literally tries to fix and repair this situation. So Nate here, he actually bought Randy's 2018 car. And if you look right. at his transmission, he's kind of missing an ear here. And oh, Does look, that look familiar? A welded ear on Does that ear. look familiar? <laughs> and, I, and what we're thinking is that that interference is probably putting yeah, some... Yeah, we, we think what it was doing with that bar that was in the wrong place. It was actually pushing back up and cracking the ears. And breaking ears and everything. Yeah. So... Uh, anyway, so this is Nate with the town thing, and Hi, everybody. he's got the nice purple dragon or yeah. purple dinosaur? Purple dragon. It yeah. is a dragon. Puff, Puff it's a purple. the Magic Race Dragon, yeah. <laughs> he's got a talent tank episode too, so go check yeah. it out. <laughs> they are here, literally have the entire car apart to be able to pull the trans and the transfer case, and they are doing a full rebuild. New torque converter. What happened was all his clutches burned out. They're gone. There's no Completely gone. There. They're done. Like he he's essentially rebuilding this whole thing look, right now on the lake bed. Supposed to look like. They didn't look like that. <laughs> Did. Not at all. I'm so sorry. It's all good. But you fixed it. You clearanced it. We did. But, we clearanced it. We'll be back for uh, qualifying on Wednesday. We're going to race the big race on Saturday. So but we'll this be out there is, with you guys. This is yeah. literally, yeah, he's in the 4400 class too. This yeah. is literally what people go through. So this happened, we got here on Wednesday. This happened on Friday. Correct. Yeah. This happened to him on Friday. So Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, and then Tuesday. So he literally hasn't had any time. He's been time dealing with this. Yeah, he's been dealing with this. We've got 20 time. miles of pre running in before Tranny Tom tore it apart and started fixing for us. So. Dude. Tranny Tom is a 
person who fixes transmissions. Trainee Tom. <laughs> <It's>, uh, <laughs> yeah, good, good point of clarity. Though. Otherwise, people might think something different. There we go. <laughs> Thank you, Trainee Tom. Tom is, not, uh, Tom is not the tranny. Tom is is the, the transmission, transmission guy. guy. <laughs> okay. Just, just clearing <laughs> that. To clarify. So it's Tuesday morning, the day before qualifying. We are having some power steering issues. It was the power steering pump started wanting. I talked to the guys over at Hal, and they said it's probably just air in the line, air in the system. So we've got the vehicle up like that to try to allow the reservoir to be the, the tallest possible, as high as possible. And we're letting all the air bubbles kind of settle before we kind of work the system. You see we have tools everywhere, all the jugs out. So what we're doing right now is we're going over the vehicle and finding out what tools we're gonna need to take with us to repair uh, anything that's damaged. So for instance, if we break or slip a belt, we need to be able to put a belt back on. Or if we break a front or rear drive shaft, those are also different tools. So we're making sure we can uh, we can actually do that. The correct sockets and everything for the starter, say the starter rattles loose and you know, little things like that. So we kind of have to think of everything. I'm also airing down all our spare tires completely because these Nitto sidewalls are so stiff. I'm gonna air them down to zero. After I qualify on these used tires, I'm gonna put the brand new tires on it, drive them around at zero PSI to get the sidewalls to break in some, and then we'll fill them up to our uh, desired pressure, which I think we're gonna run 16 in the rear, probably 20 up front, because the front has more weight to it. And I'm gonna take off on the race with the brand new tires, so that way they're scrubbed in through the desert, so by the time we get to the rocks, they're ready to go. And then these we know are scrubbed in, so these will be the spares just in case. Yeah, we're, we're, uh, we're, we're pretty set. I'm getting kind of excited, kind of nervous, but yeah. And we gotta mount the, the impact there too. Uh, there's just a lot of little things you gotta think of and we still have to go get fuel. I didn't get fuel yesterday, they ran out. VP brought a fuel tanker and they ran out. So they're supposed to have more tomorrow. Anyway, uh, we're gonna still work on this. Brittany's over getting the new race course maps because they messed up on the original. And uh, we'll just keep you updated as we keep going. So I finally got to do a little inventory of, the, of what Tactics sent us. Um, Cause what we got was just two boxes and then we just threw it in this. So we actually have it all laid out pretty nice. Uh, this is just like a last minute thing. I was kind of asking them. It's like, hey, I don't have that many tools, especially for all the big stuff that's on the Ultra 4 car. Huge wrenches, uh, hex key sets, uh, ratcheting gear wrenches. I mean, just, just all this. So thank you, Tactics. <laughs> that really helps out a lot. Uh, especially these guys, right? These are like the, the end all be all. <laughs> and then I haven't, I've never had a three quarter inch before. This is uh that's pretty gnarly. So last night at the Dirty Life photo video shoot, uh, when we got done, I was doing some burnouts. Car was running great and all of a sudden it started misfiring really badly. I'm not really sure what happened, but it was kind of scary. I was freaked out. I was, Brittany was almost, I think, in tears. Um, anyhow, so right now we think it was some debris in the fuel or a uh, spark plug wire. So we got new wires coming. Chris is about to be here and we're going to go ahead and drain the fuel. We drained some fuel this morning. We drained about four or five gallons. And there was a ton of debris in it, a bunch of rocks, dirt, everything like that. And we're seeing a little bit lower fuel pressure right now on pump one than we are on pump two. We're like 57, 58 on pump one. And then we're on 60, 61 PSI on pump two. So right now you can see we have the, uh, we have the fuel disconnected and we're actually just back feeding. We just turned the pump on and we're gonna fill the, uh, fill the jug up, let it settle, see what's in there. But we're gonna get all of that out of there and also check the fuel and check the fuel filter. So we'll see. Hey look, Brittany's back. She, she just uploaded the video right now. So, yeah, we pulled the fuel filters back apart. Uh, and and uh, look at this. I'm wondering if this is just like fine powder from just the air, like the, the desert, the, I don't know what, but this is, look at this. This is what well, I dropped in the tank. The ground, so the big stuff. Yeah, the big stuff isn't. It is so, caked. That makes sense why we were misfiring. Yeah. So it wasn't the wires. The only good news, the bad news is it made it to the injectors and that's why it was misfiring. What was the good news part? The good news is it seems <laughs> to be- We found it. We figured it out. Yeah. By the way, Chris is here. Yay. By the way, Chris is here. Wait, don't. Oh, huh. I can't see it. Sorry. <laughs> my face. So, so the uh, good news is we found it. Uh, the other good news is it seems to be fine enough that we're hoping it just made it through the injectors because it did clear up now and the power's there. It's not misfiring. We're gonna clean everything out. Dude, it looked like somebody put a, a half a pound of Play-Doh in there. Okay, so pump two had nothing in it. Pump one is back together. All the filters are clean. Jason got it all out. And then Chris shows up and he brought gifts. 
Baja Designs. So Baja Designs, we have plenty. Well, we thought we had plenty, uh, but I was talking to Jarrett over at Baja Designs. And so we have the XL80s, which are, are pretty much super bright driving lights, but you can see they're refracted on the bottom and then like driving up top. Then we have our XL Pros that are our cornering and we have the yellow covers on them. So when we're in the dust at night, we'll actually hopefully be able to see a little bit better. So as you can see, these point forward, these point out, and then we have the lasers up there. And the lasers, the laser beams are for like hundreds of yards out. But what I noticed when we were driving the other night was that these shine pretty close up front and the lasers are really far, but there was a dark spot kind of in between the two. So that's where Jarrett's like, I've got you, bro. XL Pros, see no diffraction, refraction lenses on them at all. These are gonna help fill the space. These are gonna go here. So we have our lasers there. These guys, the, the pros here, another set of XL pros here for cornering and the XL 80s for the driving. So uh, we're gonna come at you like the sun. <laughs> every other class has qualified on the qualifying lap it is a lot different than the last time we were on it so we uh, decided to bring the Jeep out the night before we qualify to take a look at what it looks like now versus what it looked like a couple days ago and it is quite a bit different so we're testing out some lines with the Jeep <laughs> some really stupid rock climbing which I wish I could film in the daytime for you guys but I can't because tomorrow we qualify in the bomber Bill Stein light bright Ultra four car. E3 off road. E3 off road, ultra four car. <laughs> 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 Guys, we qualify tomorrow morning. Like, first thing in the morning. We're one of the like, very first one. There's 9 o'clock, 10 o'clock, I think 11 o'clock. This is the rock part of our qualifying lap. It's gonna be awesome. This is gonna be fine. If I keep telling myself it's gonna be fine, it means it's gonna be fine. Guys, sure. thank you so much for watching. Please don't forget <laughs> to like, subscribe, and share. Remember, you can find all of your Lightbright Nation merch at lightbrightstudios.com. All your Lightbright Nation decals pixeldecals.com there's fireworks guys we love you so much and, and we will see you next time, time. qualifying is the next wow. video we'll see you qualifying so i tried to put my coveralls back on because we are about to go out and it's getting cold and then i zipped them up I have a fupa. <laughs> I put it on backwards. Looks like a foot butt. I didn't, I didn't mean to, but Wait, I did. Do they unzip all the way? Yes, they unzip all the way. I'm not going to because I don't feel like snapping up it. And you can get your boot. Oh, that's yeah. super cool. A fupa. <laughs> Jeez. Uh, so this is how I think we're going to mount the new lights. So we've had these and those. And those, and that's where the new ones are gonna go. That should be, uh, that should look, I think it's gonna make some people mad at night. It's gonna, it's gonna light people's life up for sure.